Good afternoon, everyone. Um, if you don't mind, I'll start off with a little bit of a joke. Um, why did the cloud cross the street? I don't know why did the cloud cross the street. To get on premise. So <laughs> with that little thing taken care of the way, I, I heard that on the way, and I thought that was pretty funny. Um, we're, uh, we've got uh, very interesting. Sorry about that. Um, we have a very interesting opportunity ahead of us here, and IoT, by any stretch of anybody's imagination, is big. We've got big companies talking about big numbers. Um, I think uh, the global GDP, just to give you some context around how these numbers are map, are, uh, is between 72 and 75 uh, trillion dollars. So these are very significant numbers that we're working against, and so um, it's a it's a fun time to be at. Um, so that's the good news. Now, how about Whenever there's good news, there's always bad news. So this is from IDC, and this is their view of the players in the IoT space. And they try to organize it by vertical and all kinds of other things like that. But the point is there's a lot of players out there. And I even question some of these are even if they are IoT companies. But the point is, is there a lot there? Um, there's another uh, first mark capital. These guys are overachievers. They try to get as many logos as they can on the page. But the point here is in IoT, there's a lot of noise and how do you get your message across. And, um, you know, and part of that, I think we're all familiar with the Gartner hype curve. Um, and if you look at IoT today, it is at the peak of uh, inflated expectations and about ready to slide down into the trough of disillusionment. Love those names. Um, and our, really, our goal here today and for the, for the foreseeable future is how do we make it so we don't go into that mode? Um, and I think when you talk about it, you have to understand what is the goal of IoT? At the end of the day, what are you trying to do? Um, at B Square, we're focusing really on the business side. We're not so much on the consumer side. We're on the industrial internet piece of it. Um, and what does that really mean? And um, I've had a really great time talking with prospective customers and partners. And when I asked them, and for, well, first of all, very few times, and in fact, I would count zero, how many people have actually come to me and said, I need an IoT solution? There's always a business problem they're trying to solve that happens to be necessary. Part of that is IoT. Um, and for example, these are some of the things as I flew, you know, burned up some jet fuel and talked to folks, they've got a warranty problem. They've got parts that are being returned and they need to be able to analyze those things and that's an IoT application behind the scenes. They've got expensive equipment that they've got to make sure that it stays operational. Again, IoT because you've got to pull that data off, you've got to be able to analyze it and perform uh, you know, anal anal analytics on it to determine downtime. Um, or one of the interesting applications we found is how are people using my device? What features are being used? Which ones are confusing? And imagine if your coffee machine could capture all that information that today is being dropped on the floor and capture that so that when I make the next version of my coffee machine, it has the right feature sets and it has the right deliverables that people really want. So really, you know, if the one takeaway from, this, from my little talk here is really focus on the business value first. Don't lead with the technology. I think that's why IoT has taken as many years. It used to be M to M, now IoT. Why it's taken so long to get to this point is because we focused on the shiny ball of the technology and kind of forgot about the business propositions that we're trying to solve. A few things, um, and I'll start with the less controversial and go to the controversial. So really, at the end of the day, we're not, the goal is not to connect to machines. That's an amazing thing, and I think we've done that. I think we've done a very good job of that. There's a lot of nuances around that, security, and those kind of things. But I think we've done a pretty good job of, of connecting up machines. The other piece of the puzzle is not always do you want to send all your data up to the cloud and back, right? Sometimes that doesn't make sense. You want to be able to distribute out that intelligence out to the edge, to the devices, and maybe at the point of, point of entry make those calls. So you want to be able to distribute out the logic and have distributed intelligence. Um, if you look at the numbers, if you do the math, there's not a network big enough to handle all that data if it truly goes outside of the device and onto the cloud. So really you have to distribute out the work. The last panel, and I, I am working with marketing to soften the words, it's not that we think that dashboards are insignificant, or it's, it's that they shouldn't be the end goal of IoT. You shouldn't, uh, the goal should not be to take data from a device and display it on a dashboard. Dashboards are fantastic to measure success, and, and so they, they should be used for that. But really, at the end of the day, you want to be able to have, in that top part, we show a full circle, capture the device data, analyze it, take some action and send it right back again so you can close the loop. 
So I want, let me walk you through what I think was, is a great example of what IoT and the innovation that IoT can bring in something that I think we use every day, that we all understand. So we all have one of these in our house, right? Thermostat. Um, makes our house more comfortable to live in. Pretty simple to use. Uh, we all understand it, and then we know what the function is. Um, this, to me, represents data at the edge. It's collecting data. We're not doing anything with it, but it is collecting data. It's got a really reasonably cheap price point. The reason why, at the end of the day, it's a commodity, right? The way I buy this, I go to Amazon, I sort on price, on color, I pick the lowest price one. That's how I buy it. So how do we up that a little bit and make it a little bit more interesting in the IoT space? So what we do is we bolt a radio onto the device. We make it Wi-Fi enabled. And we command a 3, 4x price differential on it. Why did that happen? Well, it's because we did two things fundamentally. We made the data now accessible. I can actually look at it on my iPhone, my, any phone I'm carrying. I can see what the temperature is. But more importantly, I could actually control the temperature before I get home. So when I get home, the, the house is comfortable. So what I've done now is I've taken that dark data, I've made it available, I've commanded a premium price for that, but it's very usable. What about the next step? I think we've seen all of these. Beautiful device, right? And it's, uh, it's the Nest thermostat. It's a beautiful piece of ID of industrial design. And they're commanding a 5 to 6x price differential. Is it because it's a beautiful machine? I don't think so. What they're really doing is they divided, they've defined climate control as a service. They've taken the human out of the picture. I don't even have to dial on my phone what my temperature should be. The device figured it out, knows about it. It looked at my behavior. And this is where I think IoT needs to go to, is we need to get the humans out of the picture to control some of these devices, because you can't scale. If you have a human required in every part of our decision making for IoT, you're going to have some issues going on there, and it prevents some scale. So you want to be able to enable those humans to do other things that are much more valuable, and allow these kind of low operations to, to occur. So again, if you look at the value chain, what we did was we took a device that had dark data. First step was we made that data, data accessible. Think of it as a dashboard. The second piece is we took that data and we took action upon it automatically. So that's the automation and orchestration pieces of it. And I think any, and in, in there would be some analytics, which is, really isn't shown, but I think those are the core components of any full solution stack that you're looking for IoT, is you need to have all pieces available. So how do you plan for success in this very fragmented, very quick changing market? And I think they're fairly simple, but I think they're worth kind of showing on, on the screen here. First of all, don't focus on the technology. Understand what the business value is. What is the organization trying to do to drive value? And, and those things may have IoT behind it, and they may not. You have to figure that piece out. Think big, but start small, right? Don't try, try to boil the ocean on your first version of firmware or software that you send out. It's, it's probably doomed to failure. Part of this is we don't understand most customers don't understand exactly what the end goal needs to be. So start small and do that incrementally. Leverage your smart guys in the room that understand the business problem. Again, this is not a technology sale. We've got enough technology to do it, but mapping that to business is really difficult, and that only happens when you work with the subject matter experts. Um, IoT is extremely complicated, so there's a number of different facets to it, and very few companies, and I would say probably none, have full capability to build the entire thing. So partner, find a good partner, and, or it may be multiple partners. Talk a little bit about that on a fu uh, future slide. The interesting thing, so I'm speaking a little bit as a vendor to a customer, but treat, these could be internal customers also, is I can't tell you how many times I've spoken to folks and they, they sell the technology, they talk the technology, but they don't talk about the business value. So in lots of times, instead of talking to your customers, you've got to listen, understand, and coach them on what is the, what's possible. This art of possible is something I think is missing lots of times in these discussions. It's an unfair question to ask your customer what they want when they don't even understand what the opportunities and what the possibilities are. So there's a coaching opportunity that has to go on there. So it's a very consultative sales or, uh, process to go through. Um, obviously, talk to your customers and understand their needs. Before you can even begin to understand what the business value is, you have to understand what the pain points of the customer are. Uh, so Google is very good at this 
just good enough mentality. And I think in IoT it lends itself to this, that you don't have to have a fully baked product version one. Lots of times you want to be able to come out with something just to prove out the concept, just to understand that it's a, it's a valid business proposition to go into. And it could be ugly, it could have be stitched together with duct tape and whatever you need, but the point is get something out there as quickly as possible so you can get to value. The inverse of that is if you try something that doesn't work, be able to fail fast and recover and move through it. You can't, so IoT does not lend itself to these 18-month uh, waterfall type development approaches. You really do have to have these quick, agile development systems to do that. And really the way to do that in one regard is to work with good partners and we have a strong product strategy that supports that. So call to action. So we talked about uh, thinking big and, but, but, but starting small and working on little things that you can achieve. Develop what your vision is for IoT, but really frame that in the context of what your business value is. What are you trying to achieve at the end of the day and move forward with it? And then achieve that goal in small steps. Do a divide and conquer. Don't try to do it in one fell swoop. That's just, it's too hard. There's too many moving parts. The other thing with IoT, we're all enamored with the uh, new and shiny ball that's ahead of us here with all the new technology, but um, companies have infrastructure in place that has worked quite well. No need to rip, those, rip and replace that. In fact, I, what my challenge to you would be is how do you enable those systems to be better in this connected world that we have? Don't necessarily think you have to replace everything to start over again. And if a vendor, you know, you choose a vendor that's saying that they've gotta, you've got to change your entire infrastructure, I would think long and hard before you go with that vendor. This IoT voyage is a little bit difficult and, and can be, can be uh, challenging at times. So you have to have internal champions within the organization that will drive the initiative forward, right? That doesn't stop the first time, uh, you know, a roadblock comes in, in, into play. Uh, proof of concepts, I think, are absolutely fundamental to this. And that means that you're not going to roll in from concept to production in one fell swoop. You'll have to have a, point, a proof of concept, a pilot, whatever you may want to call it, that really proves it out but limits your risk and your exposure as you go into these new realms. Because not only is there technology involved, but there's also um, security issues and customer acceptance issues. There's all kinds of things you have to worry about. So test those things out before you roll into production. I would also challenge you on this time to market, time to value. Think about time to value, not time to market. So how quickly can you have your projects really return some kind of a value? And that may be not monetary. It may be brand protection. It may be brand recognition. There's a number of different things to do, but maybe that's what you focus on as opposed to getting to market really quick. Um, and then finding a partner, I think, again, I mentioned that it's extremely important to do that. And uh, you know, with that, I'm going to go to my last slide, which is we could be that partner. So at DataV, we do have a full IoT stack all the way from the device, all the way up to the cloud, the analytics, and, and, and to move forward. And it's modular, so you can pick the pieces you want and drop the stuff you don't need. With that, I am done. <laughs>